Hello everyone, and welcome back to Echo. And I do know that my uh, accent for Leo is not very good. Uh, not a native speaker, uh, not a native English, uh, Spanish speaker, so I'll, I'll improve as the series goes on, but I do know. Just in case anyone was wondering. <clears throat> Peyton is about a bit of a distance away. To get there, you have to get on Route 93, which Flynn tells me he isn't even called that anymore. That would make sense considering how it was impossible to find on the GPS. Anyway, to get to the city, you have to merge from the remnants of 93 onto I-40, which runs straight through the city of Peyton. About 15 minutes from Peyton, you pull over at a rest stop which sits at a higher elevation than Echo. If you're looking in the right direction, it gives you a great view of the town. I stand outside the old, run-down restroom, a pall over my eyes to stare out over the desert. A, disty, a distant, hazy view of a group of small buildings huddled together signals where the town is. From this vicarious distance, it looks small and harmless. Hard to imagine all of the things that happened there. Alright, how do I use this thing? I look over and see Leo fumbling with the camera, obviously worried that he was going to break it. I walk over and show him how to use it, checking the white balance and exposure myself. I wasn't too good with cameras, but the equipment manager at the university had given me a quick lesson on how to do things. Alright, so I want you to zoom out from Echo slowly, and while you do that, I'm going to walk in from... I'm going to walk in frame, okay? Yeah, okay. Leo hoists the camera up and looks through the pathfinder, ears perked up and smiling. Alright, signal me when you're ready. I adjust a clip on mic while Leo focuses the camera, then raises his paw, signaling that I should start. I walk in the frame, keeping one paw in my pocket and using the other to gesture. I hope it don't look too awkward. I always feel like I do. Echo first began as a settlement in 1852, after James Hendrix discovered gold in a quartz deposit. The town grew quickly in size and, once it began to serve as a junction among, along Prescott Railway, it reached a peak population of 6,500 in 1877. It was at this point in time that a particular phenomenon of mass hysteria took over. Many say the reason that this occurred was due to the discovery of a body within the gold mine and the circumstances surrounding that discovery. While not much is known about this event, what is known is that once it ended, a large portion of the population left Echo. Most of those who, who left settled in the nearby town of Peyton. However, the town still managed to prosper well enough until the 40s. That's when the government stepped in to shut down the mine as it became a federal law to divert all mining resources to the war effort. The town's population sharply declined shortly thereafter, and by the 1950s it had dwindled to approximately 2,000 people. A shutdown of the Prescott Railway in, in the 1960s, followed by the bypassing of Route 93 by I-40 in 1986, was the final nail in the coffin for the town. By the 90s, the population had dwindled to just 150 people. My goal, however, is to investigate the, the first event which led to this town's decline and possible demise. What happened in that mine almost 150 years ago? I've come to Echo to try and find out what information, if any, can be gleaned from the events of the past. I wait for a few seconds and then look at Leo. That good? Oh, uh, yeah. Don't know how to stop this, though. Here. I walk, o I walk over to take the heavy camera off Leo's paws. That was pretty good. You wanna be a reporter? Mm, maybe. I'd rather just write than be on camera, though. Yo, Carl! 
Leo and I look up towards the car, greeted by the sight of a bright white ram's ass hanging out the back window of Leo's van. I don't really react. I mean, despite being self-conscious about his weight, Leo was pretty shameless about stuff like this. I'd probably seen his naked butt more often than I'd seen Leo's, and that was saying something. Make sure to get a shot of my... Hey! At that moment, Lynn, who was sitting next to Carl in the back, reaches around and yanks the ram's pants down so that they're hanging around his knees. Even though Carl's pretty quick to pull them back up, I still get a pretty good view of his equally big white balls dangling between his legs. Leo snorts and I can see Flynn laughing his ass off while Carl punches him in the shoulder. Unfortunately for TJ, who was sitting in the middle row with Jenna, he was looking back at the at the time and probably got a much better view than I did. Now he's facing forward, covering his face while Jenna sits next to him, reading a book, looking uninterested. Nearly 21 and he's still doing that, huh? Yeah, it's a little more awkward without you three around, though. We head back to the car and I grab the camera bag from the passenger seat to put the camera away. Hey, did you see my ass? Saw more than that. Your thing's about the horrors of Echo, right? It will be a perfect fit. Well, if you could even fit it on the camera. I stashed the camera bag in the foot footwell before hopping in. Southwest Adventures is an amusement park right in the middle of Peyton. It's decent enough that people come not just from Peyton, but cities up to 100 miles away to vacation here. Because of this, it's usually crowded, and today is no exception. Families and their friends are everywhere. It's a generally nice day, sunny, in the 80s, and it being a Sunday added to the crowd. I didn't mind, though. The point of this is to hang out with my friends. I don't know about you guys, but I'm starving. Let's get some funnel cakes. Jesus, Carl, we just got here. Hey, I didn't have any breakfast. You had breakfast, all right. A blunt with a side of the munchies. It's no problem. You can do that while I plan out what we're doing. Carl ambles off on his way to the funnel cake stand. I snagged one of the park maps from the entrance and hand that to Leo. All right, so usually when my family comes here, we go clockwise to hit all the rides. That sounds like a plan. It's pretty crowded today, so so we probably won't be able to do everything. But in this order, we'll at least be able to ride Event Horizon. You, you sure? But the line's always so long for that ride. TJ's looking up towards the tall, spiraling, electric, red steel roller coaster. It's definitely the most recognizable landmark in the park. You could see it from almost everywhere in Peyton. Yep. Fastest and tallest roller coaster in the West. I think it'll be worth it. Oh. TJ rubs his arm with one paw, the corner of his muzzle twitching a little bit. I had forgotten about that. He, he used to have a pretty pronounced motor tick when, where the corner of his mouth would twitch up over and over again. It used to be a constant thing, but it stopped once we entered middle school. Justin hadn't completely gone away. You alright, TJ? We could skip the big rides if you... Oh hell, TJ. You're a fucking adult now. No, no, it's fine. I, I'm fine. I just haven't been on a roller coaster in a while. DJ snaps his head back towards us. He's all tensed up and the movement looks like a rubber band being snapped. I'm riding all the rides with you guys. DJ walks off, his paws shoved deep in his pockets. I feel bad for him. I want to give him an out somehow, but that's when Carl comes back with his funnel cake. It's stuffed with ice cream, powdered sugar, and strawberries. Anyone want to share? 
Yeah, that looks really good. No, all right. I'll have to eat the whole thing. Great. Now we gotta wait for fat ass to finish eating. Carl pulls his face out of the cake. Even with his white fur, I can see the powdered sugar clinging to his chin. Nah, I can eat in line. We're going on Event Horizon first? It'll be an hour long at least. The line ends up being two hours long, and by the time we get to the actual ride, I'm dying to get into a pool of any kind. To put it bluntly, an otter needs water. Part of the problem of living in Echo meant that we didn't have any kind of indoor pool system in our house, being as cheap as it was. We ended up having to get an outdoor swimming pool, which was a pain. Be nervous, Chase? I smirk at him. I've written it before, Leo. Though your tail's kinda down. Sure you're not nervous? Eh? Come on, Leo, let's ride the front. Oh, I, I don't know. I watch as Jenna pulls Leo towards the line for the front, which is twice as long as all the others. I opt for the middle, and it just so happens that TJ comes with me. His tufted ears have been poking straight up the entire time, also giving an occasional twitch. I lean over to him. You know, there's an exit over there for people who, uh, change their mind. I'll bet you could slip out with anyone knowing. Looks like not all of us are going to be riding the same train. DJ stares straight ahead, clutching onto the railing. I can see his sharp claws and sheath pressing into the metal and chipping away some of the red paint. No, I'm fine. You sure? Yep. Perfectly fine. <laughs> well, we're in the middle, which is the best place to be if you don't like roller coasters. Uh-huh, yeah. I really want to be able to get TJ to skip the ride, but it seems like he's pretty determined to do it for some reason. Finally, our train comes along, and I step in as two laughing, panting hyenas step out. Oh my god! That was the most intense! Holy shit, dude! I know! I I never get scared on rides. I almost fucking pissed myself. I do a quick check of the seat to make sure there isn't any actual piss before sitting down. I look up and see TJ standing on the edge of the platform, his eyes wide, one foot stuck out to get on. TJ? I, 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 uh... A bored-looking teenage fox comes by to check my lap bar and I stick out my paw. Hey, wait. TJ, you getting on? The fox goes from looking bored to mildly annoyed. If you're getting on, you need to get on now. We can't hold up the entire ride for you, sir. The exit's that way where other adventures wait. People around us are starting to notice. Unfortunately, Flynn, who's lined up with Carl towards the back, is paying very close attention, grinning like he knew this was going to happen. Oh, TJ too scared. Guess you're a pussy after all. Shut up, Flynn. Hey, TJ, when it gets real bad, just say to yourself, at least I'm not gonna die. Actually, a few people have. TJ? I yell at him, and that seems to jar TJ out of his trance. He almost falls into the car as he, car as he stumbles into it, fumbling with the shoulder restraints before the fox attendant sighs and leans down to do it for him. I can see the red on the insides of TJ's ears as he blushes, and I feel my own ears burn a little from secondhand embarrassment. Now that it's too late, I realize we shouldn't have started with this ride. He should have started with something smaller to build up his confidence. I'm bolted back as the train moves forward. Oh gosh!
TJ's paw lashes out and latches onto my arm. Oh no, no, why am I doing this? I reach over and try to move his paw from my arm and, and back onto the handle on his shoulder restraints. TJ, hold on to that, my arm, you're gonna... Chase, quiet! I pause, staring at the lengths. I'm really not used to hearing TJ yell. He's almost puffed out twice his size. I just need some quiet right now and... Ah! Our train begins its ascent up the first hill and I can feel TJ's claws prickling through my fur and to my skin. He starts mumbling quietly to himself, his eyes closed. TJ, are you praying? He doesn't say anything and soon we've reached the apex of the climb. I give up on trying to move his paw and sit back, a little nervous myself. I really, really hope TJ doesn't completely lose it. I rinse the blood off my arm in a dirty theme park bathroom. It wasn't as bad as I thought it could have been, though TJ did start crying when we hit the first inversion. He had scratched the shit out of my forearm, grabbing it with both paws once we started the descent. Unfortunately, Flynn and Carl were still on the platform when we rolled back into the boarding station. Flynn looked ready to lay in the TJ again, but when he saw the tears, he had the decency to hold back. I helped the shake links out of the car, and somehow he, we managed to stumble into the bathroom where he quickly hid in the stall. I should have forced him out the exit. He'd always had anxiety problems, even though I think we all believed it was a childhood thing that he'd gotten over. I don't know if he still takes medication. Hey, TJ? Yeah? We should probably get back. Leo texted me that we're all waiting by the ride. Yeah, I'll be out in a second. The cheeriness in his voice is forced. I ignore the weird looks I'm getting from the other people in the bathroom and instead inspect my arm. The scratches are pretty superficial, so the bleeding has stopped. No one would notice it under the thick fur, even if it's tender as hell. I hear the stall door open behind me and through the mirror, I see TJ come out. He sees me looking over my arm and his face crumples up again. Chase, uh, I'm sorry. Is it bad? I really don't want him to start crying again. Chicho cried a lot when he was a kid, almost every day, and even at 19, it seems like he's still pretty susceptible. It's fine. It's it's fine. Don't don't even doesn't even hurt. Oh, well, that, that's good. We stand there awkwardly for a few seconds, then I air out my shirt, which is starting to stick to my sweaty body. Listen, it's honestly getting way too hot for me to wait in lines all day. I think I'd really just sit down and watch some shows or something. Oh yeah? Yeah. Uh, you want to do that with me? TJ's ears come up a little bit and he clutches his paws together, the fidgeting subsiding a bit. Yeah, Chase, I, I think that'll be fun. I can tell he's at least a little relieved. We both head out back towards the ride, and I spot the four of them waiting by the exit. I furrow my brow as I spot Carl crouched on the ground, Jenna kneeling next to him and rubbing his back. Hey, everything all right? Jenna looks up, a sympathetic smile on her face. Carl's not feeling too good. Uh, you want to sit on a bench or something? If I move, I'm gonna... That's what you get for stuffing your face right before the ride. You think they sell ginger peels here, or ginger ale, or at least? Oh, a joint would be nice. There are some vineyards over there. I'll go check. I'm actually kind of glad everyone's preoccupied with Carl right now. Take some heat off of TJ. Let's move you to a bench. It'll be better if you're sitting down. Slowly, Jenna 
and Leo lift Carl up, and now I can see from his face that he really is ill. To the average person, our little outing might already seem like a disaster, but this is per perfectly typical for us. Nothing ever went according to plan. We sit Carl down at a bench and he bends over, his face in his hands as he moans softly. Gigi comes back with a medium-sized cup in his paws. He sits next to Carl. No ginger ale, but they did have some lime soda. Carl takes it and sips a bit of it before sitting back and belching. Oh, fuck it. I'm done, guys. What? What are you going to do all day? Sit there? Actually, me and Chase are going to go see some shows. You can come with us. Ugh. Boys, we were doing this to hang out with each other, remember? Oh, leave him. We're wasting time. Glenn turns and walks off, his hands shoved in his pockets, hunched over like a stone gargoyle. He definitely looked the part, being a lizard. Damn, that was probably a bit specious. Well, we all have our phones. Text us, all right? Sure. Jenna turns and follows Flynn, but Leo hesitates a moment. He looks at me before eventually turning to follow Flynn and Jenna. Five minutes later, Carl's stomach settles to the point where he's able to get up and walk. At this point, I'm completely wiped out, and I just want to sit down. I point out the first stage we see, and they agree. I sigh gratefully when I sit down. You look tired as shit. I crack an eye open and see Carl giving me a sidelong glance. I don't sleep very well in motel beds. I actually woke up around... Two? You were gone. Now TJ's staring at me too and I feel my gut clench for a second. Yeah, I tried to go for a walk down the street. Hoped it would... Help me get tired. Hmm. Well, if that happens again, you can just walk over to my house. I'm up at like three every night. Wow, why? Carl shrugs, leaning back and sticking his hooves up against the chair in front of him, earning him a dirty glance from its occup occupier. Games, mostly. Sometimes I read. Carl rubs his chin, opening his muzzle. Closing it, then opening it again. You know, it would be pretty cool if you spent the night one of these days. The house can be creepy as hell when you're the only one in it. You're alone? Yeah, parents are vacationing in the regal paradise, having a bloody good time, they tell me. Crow tries to put, put on accent, but doesn't do a very good job of it. Oh, you didn't want to go with them? Or blows a raspberry laughing. <laughs> yeah, not really. Mom told me right away that weed isn't legal there, so I took took that as them not wanting me to come along. Oh. They did say that the chocolate there is real, whatever that means. And they're gonna bring me some. Guess I'm not enough of a fat ass yet. Come on, girl. But dude, I'm getting there. Soon. All I have to do is stand in front of the mirror, block out my face, and jerk it to my moobs. I make a dumb snorting croaking sound. I can feel TJ looking at the two of us disapprovingly. Not the hardest thing to do when you're high. Wait, so you've actually done it? Barrow shrugs, smirking at me. I reach out and grab his chest. What I can tell... There are a pretty firm set of pecs under there. Carl puts a mock horrified look on his face. Sexual assault! He touched my breast! Oh, whatever, Carl. They're harder than mine. So now we're teenage girls in the locker room comparing rock racks? Hey, you're the one that brought the up tits. You know what? I can see it. <laughs> you're the hot prep preppy one everyone likes. I'm the bit f I'm the big fat chick. You're all nice to. 
but call Big Thunder Mountain behind her back. TJ! TJ hadn't been paying attention, distracted with watching some dancers on stage. He looks innocently at us. Huh? You're the cute, naive Christian chick that only takes it up the butt so as to stay a virgin. What? Let me feel your boobies. I want to compare. What in the world are you ta- No! Small but perky. After a few seconds of tussling and Carl getting smacked in the nose by TJ, somebody shushes us from behind and we're forced into silence. The show starts off with a bunch of mice having a weird sort of hoedown. TJ's really into it and actually starts clapping along. I smile. TJ definitely could be cute sometimes. Carl just rubs his nose and leans back, watching with a smirk as if the whole thing is a joke to him. At this point, my eyelids were feeling really heavy. At most, I've gotten maybe four hours of sleep last night. I think about leaning my head back, but the backs of the chairs are pretty low and I just end up with my head hanging over the back. Le leaning forward would just be impossible. I could lean on one of my friends. I don't think they'd even mind. Probably gonna do so. Carl was definitely the better choice. Bigger and probably softer, he'd make a nice pillow. Carl, I'm gonna use you as my bed. Huh? I put my head on his shoulder and closed my eyes, feeling the soft, puffy, sleepless hoodie and his bulk under my cheek. Weirdly enough, he was pretty damn sturdy. I had expected him to feel like a fluffy pillow. Damn, Chase, you that tired? Mm -hmm. Well, alright then. I feel him shift and suddenly he's putting an arm across the back of the bench, giving me more support. The gesture makes me feel a little warm. I can feel TJ's eyes on us, but I ignore him, enjoying the position of intimacy. The sounds of the clapping and fiddles starts to drift away as the lack of sleep takes its toll. 